Yo, what's up, guys? It's Nick from Begins Gaming, and welcome back to another MLB The Show 20 dev stream recap. I don't really know what to officially call these, but, like, yeah. So, they just had the Martial October stream. This was the second-to-last stream. The final stream is finally Diamond Dynasty news, which I'm going to go ham on that pretty much when they put out the Coach's Couch video. I'm going to react to it. Do a huge breakdown, and then when they do the stream, that is probably going to be one of one of the longest video videos you'll see. You've seen for me in a while. Uh, I'm going to break it down a lot. So, yeah, we aren't really talking that much about Diamond Dynasty today. There is some stuff. Uh, so, first of all, the first thing they showed in the stream were three new players to that Diamond Variety Choice Pack, which you get... From pre-ordering any edition of the game except for the standard edition. You get to choose one of the seven diamonds. They confirmed that it's one of seven diamonds. And they've revealed all of them except for one. So before the stream we already knew that there was a, a 86 David Ortiz. 86. I don't, I don't remember the overalls. But they were low overalls. Or not low overalls. Low diamonds. David Ortiz. Mariano Rivera. Uh, Gary Sheffield. And who was, who was, oh yeah. And so they revealed the next three in this stream. So in this stream, they revealed John Smoltz, Tom Glavin, and Greg Maddox. We already knew that they were in the game, but like they revealed that those cards would be in those in that pack, which is pretty cool. You know, there's some pretty good pitchers, but like I don't I don't think they should have done all three in one pack because they're they're really similar pitchers. So, I don't know. I feel like that just takes up too much space in the pack of having, like, three of the same pitchers. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty similar. Um, but, yeah. So, the rest, excluding the last on this, the last thing on this list, is from March to October. So, the first thing they showed is the new reward structure for Team Affinity. So, basically how it works is, last year, in the first year of March to October... You only got rewards in Team Affinity for winning the World Series. It was a World Series or bust. If you won the World Series, you got all the stars. If you didn't, you got the zero. This year, they're changing it, so you don't actually have to win the World Series to get to get like any rewards, which I think is really good. I, I think that's a lot better because if you spend like these things take more than ten hours. If you spend like more than ten hours and you don't get anything out of it, that 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 doesn't really suit well. But I think the way they have it working now is really good. So they have like stages where you can get rewards and you get more based on your performance. So if you're overperforming, you get more. If you're underperforming, you don't, I don't think you get a decrease. You just get the normal. I'm not really sure. Um, so I think it's at like the all-star break, the playoffs, division series, championship series, and then the world series. I think that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure. Also, let's say you are you have a losing record at the first stage, at the All-Star break. You still have a reason to keep playing because if you improve your record, even if you make the playoffs, let's say at the All-Star break, you're below 500, you're like 400, right? And then at the end of the season, you're like 600 and you just missed the playoffs. You're going to get rewarded heavily for improving a lot. So there's still a reason to keep playing if you're not doing well in the first half which is another great addition. So the next thing, they completely overhauled trades. So trades, last year, there was only one time you could trade and you can only get hitters, which I don't think that was good. So pretty much, that was how it worked last year, right? So this year, you can trade for starting pitchers, you can trade for relief pitchers, and they have like a trade block like in franchise. So you can set your trade block, who you want to trade, who you want to acquire, what positions you want to get, what prospects you want to trade, what types of players you want. So I think that's really cool. And then also, you don't have one chance to trade. In MLB 19, there was one time you would trade and it would be the day before the deadline. This time, there are multiple stages where you can trade which is great because you can get different offers at different times, which work well. Let's say so you're 
on let's say you're the, you're the Rockies and Nolan Arenado tears his ACL and he's out for the year, and you are on the last trade phase and you get Chris Bryant. That's like good for the third phase. It's just being having the ability to have different spots where you can make trades is great. So after trades, we have the new prospect system in March to October. Last year, they didn't have any call-ups. Um, but this year, you can call up players in certain phases. You can, uh, you can, yeah, you can just pretty much call up prospects whenever. You, I don't think whenever you want, but in certain phases, you can also trade them. And also this year, with the full minor league rosters coming, that's going to be really nice. So after prospects, we have new presentation stuff. So. For the new presentation stuff, Kirby St. John was talking about it, and there's this new guy who actually worked in ESPN, which is pretty cool. So they have a brand new theme. They only have one theme this year, which I think is cool because it stands out. It's like the MLB The Show theme, um, and it looks pretty cool, and they still have the MLB Network theme too. But the thing about themes that's pretty cool is they've changed them in moments. In moments... It's they they directly said that it would be weird doing a moment in the 20s with some legend and having a 2020 theme. So they made themes. They made two two different historic. No, they made three different historical themes. So also, if you guys don't know what a theme is, it's like just the scoreboard in like the bottom bottom right. So they have one theme from 1970 and earlier they have another for the 70s and the 80s and then they have another for the 90s so those are pretty cool and they actually look pretty nice and i think that that's a good that's a good touch and the last thing is going to be the new themes in moments i just said i'm looking at my phone so if you've seen me going like this i'm looking at my phone to look at my list so the last thing is actually the Craig Biggio uh, reveal. His son, Kavan Biggio, plays for the Blue Jays. He's one of the top prospects in the league. He ha- He's had some time. He played a lot last year. I think he can break out this year, obviously. But his dad was a really good player for the Astros before. They were scumbags and they cheated. So they were <laughs> legit back then. Um, but yeah, he's a great player. He started as a catcher, moved to second base, then... In the sort of end of his career, he moved to the outfield, and then he went back to second base to finish his career. So he's going to have lots of secondaries on his Diamond Dynasty cards, just his cards in general. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I've been your host, Nick from Begins Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.